Now, even though you're sitting as far away from me as possible, Amanda and Steve, I'd like to start with you. Amanda, you and Fanola Dwyer um, are, among other things, the first women production team to have had the distinction of two Academy Award nominations for Best Picture with an Education. And last year's Brooklyn. Steve, you and Elizabeth Carlson have made some crackers as well, including last year's Carol. Um, I wondered what brought you two together on this one. Well, I was just going to say that we both, unbeknownst to each other, fell in love with this uh, book at their finest hour and a half. And uh, Stephen, you, you usually very good at detecting things, found out that I was the other person competing for the book. And we know each other of old. And he called me up and said, we've got to do this together. Yeah, Amanda and I worked together many years ago on films. Uh, Amanda actually worked with me on Interview the Vampire and the very, on the post-production of The Crying Game. So we've known each other for mm. a very, very long time. Um, and when I found out that Amanda was completely, I rang her up and just said, this is completely crazy. In fact, we, went, we made Fever Pitch together all those years ago. Um, so I said, well, why don't you just do it together? Um, which was great. It was a real joy. And it was really, um, we were both fell in love with Lissa's book, to be honest. Although it wasn't, in fact, a bestseller. No, and it wasn't an obvious adaptation to film. But I think we both uh, felt very passionate about bringing this story about, about filmmaking and storytelling from the war to the public. Okay, thank you. Lorna, you've made wonderful films in your native Denmark, like Italian for beginners, but you seem to really be on a roll of showing a remarkable affinity with British actors and tackling the tone and the atmosphere of very, of very particularly British stories. Why is that, do you think? What's the appeal to you? It is just that the British actors, the British stories, the British architecture, uh, London that I love more than ever because of this film and because I get to know uh, your film history better with this film. Um, but primarily, of course, it's the scripts because when you first read it, I've, it's scripts that I feel related to, that I can tonally think I can um, work with, be uh, where I feel close enough to the writer to feel I'll be loyal to the material and still feel that I have something to bring to the table. And for some reason, those scripts are from here. <laughs> Gemma, uh, you, you're already showing remarkable range in your career, but this is another string to your bow. I wondered what appealed to you most, this, the idea of this woman finding herself almost accidentally, or just the whole... The, the love letter to filmmaking when making movies mattered terribly. <laughs> Both. I, I'm, I was very impressed to see a story that focused on, was you know, the centre point is a woman who's sort of not necessarily a showy character or um, even feisty or strong and all of that stuff. And she's, she's just her. And it's quite sort of um, gentle. Um, uh, and yes, and, all, and, and then, you know, just making a film about filmmaking is, is, we all know that world and it's our expertise, or some of our expertise is. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and, and also I've been wanting to work with Lona for so long and then, you know, this came along, so very lucky. A no-brainer. Yeah. Sam, I'm not sure if it's the mustache, but it seems to me that this is the most mature role you've done, the, mo the most <laughs> grown-up <laughs> character. Most <laughs> and he could be, so, I mean, he's... You know, he, it's interesting that because he, he's cynical and he's got his bitter, twisted side, but he's also, you managed to make him very endearing. I was wondering how, this was a new experience for you, surely, how you um, uh, psyched yourself into being Mr. 1940. Uh, I think I just grew a moustache. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's, that's true. Um, that was all me. I was very <laughs> happy about that. Um, no, I, I think for me, it, it, was, it was a departure from anything I've, done before like it was very different it was a very very mature role as you say and I think I think I was fortunate enough this being my second time working with Lona I knew the way that she liked to prepare um, and, and sort of rehearse and I always enjoy exploring a character in a world you know in a, with with a company of people and I think I wasn't alone in, in sort of navigating that like with Gemma we were fortunate enough to have a very early script read and we, I think we sat down with Amanda and Stephen as well. And I, you know, I think there's, it was such a collaborative thing, and I don't think I ever really thought too hard and too deeply about it. I think I just sort of, 
I remember Lono approaching me just after shooting Riot Club, sort of said that there's this other project I'm thinking of doing and you're perfect for this part. And I think when I, when I read the script, I was like, I don't see why I'm <laughs> perfect <laughs> for this part. But I think, it, 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 strangely, I think I did naturally just fall into it a little bit. And um, I, I think the spar, having Gemma as a sparring partner, that, that chemistry was sort of there without having to try. And, you know, it, it's, it sort of was quite easy. I never, I hate saying that it was easy. <laughs> I'm such a good actor, it was so easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but it was, it was free, I felt free. It was, yeah. Thank you. Rachel, I'm struggling to see you down there. Um, Phil is such a, a rockin' chick for 1940. Um, you have one of my, f uh, there, in a film full of great lines, you have one of my favorites, which is when you say, they're afraid that we, they won't be able to put us back in the box when this is over, and it makes them belligerent. <laughs> my my favorite line is, oh, he's an actor. Unless you've reviewed him, had intercourse with him, or done both simultaneously, he won't remember you. <laughs> <laughs> was it the script that appealed to you the most, or was it the whole atmosphere and tone? It was all of those things. I'd seen Lona's films before, um, and the script entirely. Phyllis uh, is t a true original. Um, and without, we've managed, it's not a navel gazerly thing, but what I love, I do love a film about filmmaking. I like seeing the, the doing of stuff, the texture of it, which Lona captures so beautifully, um, and her DOP. Um, you know, the, the Red Shoes is my favourite film of all time. I like seeing how things are done, and this explores that so extraordinarily. And then, and then on top of it, you have re the realism of the war and the fantasy of filmmaking. So to me, it, it has all the elements that, that I want to sit in a darkened room and see come together. Lovely, thank you. Bill, I'm sure I'm not the only one wondering if when you were a, a mere stripling at the RSC, you may have known some seasoned hams um, of yesteryear who might have <laughs> inspired Ambrose a tiny touch. How dare you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never worked at the RSC, just you for the You have, record. I saw you. Well, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. You just wished you'd see me at the RSC. I have never worked for the Royal Shakespeare Company. But um, my classical work, there's a very distinct lack of classical work on my CV, which is largely because I refuse to operate in those kind of trousers. <laughs> which is not even a joke. I just, if you, if you want the best out of me, I, ha I have to be in a decent lounge suit, as we used to be. So this part, I got to wear some very big trousers in this part. Um, what was the question? <laughs> if it was all you or if you'd been inspired by... Any, oh, I uh, see. I don't know about... It's funny because I, I, I haven't met that word ham, which is a sort of period word, and I understand what you mean, but I, I haven't actually met that many. It's a generational thing. I don't think they survived into the modern era. I mean, there are, there are versions of it, I suppose. I don't generally respond to... You know, actors are brought on as characters in movies and plays, usually for unattractive reasons. They're not brought on to demonstrate how wonderful human beings can be. Uh, you know, it's like journalists are often, you know, if, if journalists are, they're occasionally heroic. You very rarely get a heroic actor. Um, they're generally brought on to uh, demonstrate what a mess we can be, you know. Uh, but I got, but I, this script was very, very cool and very, and, the, and, and it's extremely, uh, satisfying in every area and I and I very very much wanted to work with Lona as did everybody else uh, I admire her tremendously and I was so so thrilled when this script came through the door with her name attached to it I love the book too and it's and it, and it is a great you know and it's a, it, it's conspicuously a, a great role because I get to you know fanny around in various different forms <laughs> um, but you know they were looking for someone to play a chronically self-absorbed actor in his declining years, and they thought of me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is something that's easier to process on some mornings rather than others. <laughs> but you do it so beautifully. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank my colleagues for having listened to that joke about 18 times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's so over to you, ladies and gentlemen. If I can see some hands. Okay, we're gonna, I'll pick three to begin with so we can get microphones to you. Lady here, please, lady here. And um, the gentleman who isn't just waving at me, the, where's the, yes, the, gen, the blonde, yeah, you weren't just waving at me, were you, yes. Okay, um, go first, please. Yes, give it a 
Thanks. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Hi, good morning. Um, can you hear me? I can't yep. tell. This is a question for Gemma. Um, I've got to look at my notes here because the character that you play um, of Catherine, um, when she's brought in to do the writing on these, these uh, propaganda films, she's brought in to write the nausea and the slop for women. What, I mean, was that a phrase that you were, have been familiar with before? And did it make you feel a little bit nauseous that <laughs> women were expected to write this stuff back in the day? Yeah, it was a. It, I'm not wrong in thinking it's, it was a term used. It was, yeah. yeah, no, it was. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't Slop. a populist term. It was used at Ealing Films. They had one female writer only at Ealing, who was employed just to write the female dialogue, and so they called it the nausea, because they would they would they would say give it to the, and she was Welsh in fact. Her name is Diana, Diana Morgan. Yeah. And so they would give her the nausea, but it wasn't an industry term as such. But at Ealing it was. So at Ealing Films, who made all those wonderful movies during the war and after the war. It was a term that was used. So I think Lissa, who wrote the book, picked up on the nausea and turned it into slop, <laughs> um, which was another term that was used in America, in fact, for um, female writing. You know, yeah, oh, that's the soft, that's the slop. Yeah. So it was a, it was, it was actually a, you know, it was a, a in terms of film screen screenplay, there were a lot of women employed during the war who were never credited, given you know fifty quid, just to write the female parts. In fact, there was a woman employed on the third man. Nobody knows quite what she wrote on the film, but she could have written that famous um, Orson Welles speech, for all right. we know. So <laughs> women were hired all the time to write nausea or slop. Yeah, but for, for, for you, Gemma, in the 21st century, did, do you find that quite sexist? <laughs> <laughs> or, or was it because it was part of that era? Yeah, it, it, well, of course, it's obviously sexist. Um, I think, uh, funnily enough, for Catherine, I don't think she's aware of it. I think at that time, I think people just kind of accepted that we, we hadn't had that second wave. Fem we hadn't had the feminist movement yet. And so it was sort of, the, we were in the, in the 1940s, you were kind of, you just kind of got on with it, I imagine, I, I would imagine. Um, and what I like about Catherine is that she is, she is a feminist and she doesn't know it yet. She just sort of, within that circumstance, sort of ends up, being pushed into certain situations where she ends up putting her point down. But, um, and I like that about this film is that it has a message, but it's not, it's very, very underneath and it doesn't sort of shout about it. It's, it's just there. I think that's stronger than kind of making a big deal out of it. Yeah, it's the, it was the, it's the casual sexism that I think was quite attractive in a sense to me like, because it, of, it, it is of an, no sorry let me rephrase that no, but it, it is of a time and I think it sort of proves how far we've come I mean there's obviously still f a lot further to go but th there's there's a line I remember um, I think Phil says obviously you won't get paid as much as the boys and, and just it's just something you know that's just that was that was standard at, at that time but I think you know we've got a lot further to to come, but uh, yeah, it, it, I, I sort of loved the sort of subtle humour of the time, which we laugh at now, but at the time was a very serious thing, um, but something that wasn't sort of necessarily talked about as much as it should have been. Great, thank you. Yes, ma'am? Good morning. A question for Sam and for Gemma. Having now played screenwriters, I just wondered whether you've got a, um, a sort of greater um, respect for the craft of screenwriting now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's 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 hard. It's uh, I mean, constructing a film and and I mean I, at the moment I'm I'm I've I'm making my own film at the moment, but I haven't written the dialogue. <laughs> that bit I just can't even think to go there. But it's really really intricate and I mean especially under this guise of you know propaganda filmmaking, so it had to be a certain way. And even though you know making films now, they can't necessarily make what you want to make. You have to kind of make them around certain regulations and things like that. But yeah, it's, a, it's an incredible, uh, un incredibly detailed process that I often just before didn't realize how difficult it was. But also so thrilling. I mean, the scene, I think my, one of my favorite scenes is when we're kind of um, brainstorming together in, and it's so thrilling and um, I can imagine it's like that, isn't it, Lona? It's just like that. <laughs> 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 you just brainstorm and suddenly there's all these amazing ideas and then a story comes. Sometimes <laughs> it's the best job you can have and I, I, what I'm hoping is that a lot of 
writers will want to become screenwriters after having seen those films, because as actors know, they are the most important. Yeah. It, the script is the most important part of, of a film, uh, with all respect. But you already knew that. You're yeah. from here. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. It's only because I read the script. <laughs> <laughs> But I think, yeah, I think for me, I, I've tried, I've tried my hand at writing a script, and I, I found it incredibly difficult <laughs> to make the characters sound different to myself. I, I think I, I ended up just using my voice, but as I was sort of reading the lines out loud, I was like, they all sound exactly the same, even the female <laughs> and the men, <laughs> which is great again. <laughs> but like, it's you know, it, it's sort of all. And then after writing a couple of what I thought were incredibly great scenes, um, I then realised I didn't know what was going to happen after that or what happened before that. Or I think structurally, like to have the, the gift of being able to structure something um, like a film, like like a story, like a novel, like a series or whatever, I, I think that's incredibly difficult. And I, I think it's a gift for the people that do and are fortunate enough to actually make sense of uh, uh, stories that need to be told. But... Yeah. Thank you. Up there, you got your mic? I do indeed. Um, congratulations, everyone, on the film, first of all. Um, this is a question to everyone, but I guess perhaps starting with Gemma. Um, I guess, firstly, how specifically it feels to bring this film here to the London Film Festival, and in a wider sense, um, what for you is the true power of cinema, the magic of cinema, which I think this film, in part, uh, is a celebration of? Um, okay, I will answer it a bit, and then I'll pass it on like I always do. <laughs> um, no, I'm I'm really proud of this film, and I feel like it's a, it's a, it's it's so wonderful to show it here. I mean, tonight we've we've got Sadiq Khan sort of hosting it, and I just feel, you know, it's a it's a real love letter to London and 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 how how wonderful it is, and how wonderful diverse the culture is and and what we can do here and the uh, and the spirit of uh, London so yeah to show it show it here is really exciting and I think it's sort of it's very hopeful and very um, yeah a hopeful film and I think which is obviously what we need right now um, <laughs> um, and also yeah transport it's transport it's transportive that's a word isn't it I have to check with Rachel because yeah. Rachel knows <laughs> words and she's like a dictionary. Um, yeah, but it, it, I think that's the. For me, I, I mean, my taste in cinema is is quite bizarre, and um, sometimes I like to be completely disturbed by films. But this was, is not disturbing. It makes you feel, uh, it makes you feel happy, and it r reminds you that you might even feel emotion sometimes. Um, so yeah, it's it's. I'm very proud of it. Now someone else needs to talk, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, think for, I think for us, we, we just loved making a film about a time when making films was so important. You know, we act, producers always act like it's a matter of life and death. We've got to get our money, we've got to get our star, we've got to get a look, oh my God, we've fallen through, oh, what are we going to do? But actually, the, when they made films in the 40s, it was a matter of life and death. They had no idea if they were going to have a film set the next day, whether they were going to have any actors, whether the, the, whether the Germans had invaded. And these films were little love letters to America, please come and help, please come and help, and al also at the same time trying to keep the people living through the Blitz in London, in Coventry, in Bristol, across Britain, you know, keep them happy, keep a smile on their face. How can we do this? How can we make films? So f for us as producers, we think we have challenges, but when you look back at the writers and producers and directors and actors in those days, my God, they had challenges. It was, a, it was an incredible time. And I'm just so proud to be associated with a film, having made films like Absolute Beginners and Mona Lisa and The Crying Game and Scandal and all those movies I made, which were about London, which were all sort of love letters to London. It's so great to make a film that's really about filmmakers and filmmaking at a time when it was a matter of life and death. And that's an important factor for us, for both Amanda and I, when we were making this film, is that you know, they look a bit corny, those films now, but actually, they were so important. 30 million people a week used to go to the cinema. That, you know, that's never going to happen again. I mean, this was the golden age of filmmaking and film going, and people needed those movies. Mm. Can we get the mic to the lady in the front row? With, and let me line up a couple of others. Is there a um, mic to this gentleman second? And one more. And that lady. OK. Go ahead, Nim. 
Hi, um, it's very much a film about filmmaking and in Catherine's case, starting out an exciting industry for the first time. Um, what advice, if you were to go back, would you um, give to anybody starting out in the film industry today? <laughs> I'd say work with really good people that you admire. Try and, try and get their uh, attention and try and get uh, a lowly, lowly level job in whatever way you can in the companies and with people whose work you admire. That's my advice. Okay. That's it. Um, hello. Yeah. Um, a question for Gemma and Lona. I just go, wanted to go back to what Sam said. He quoted that line from early on in the film that you, know, you won't get paid as much as the chaps. How much is, is that kind of attitude still an issue in 2016? Lona? <laughs> You'll know what I think about that. I was thinking about a different line when um, Buckley says, girls don't want to be the hero, they want to have him, they want to be, have, uh, uh, be, to be had him. by him. Um, and Catherine hardly reacts to it, I don't think it really sinks in in the scene. Um, and... Um, yeah, it was just another example in the film of her tasting blood, the, finding out how much fun it can be to go to work little by little because she didn't expect that. And his increasing respect for her, Buckley's finding his emotional identity and Catherine's finding her professional identity. And I think that happens all the time in our world today. Um, uh, so, and if if you're asking about relevance or professional relevance or emotional relevance for men and women today, uh, I never felt that this film was uh, primarily a feminist film. I always thought um, the the uh, film history, the love story, Ambrose's character, uh, was what attracted me more. And that the, the whole story about a woman finding out what she can do and, and gaining respect for it is uh, definitely the main plot in the story. But the, the whole package, all the details, London, the film industry, the necessity is, is what gives the film its depth and its um, complexity. It's much more than a story about a girl who finds out how much fun you can have at work. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Hello, it's a question for Gemma and uh, Sam. There are quite a few twists in the in the story, in the plot. Did you play any active part in the in the screenwriting at all? Sorry, I don't understand twists. the twi There are oh, lots twists. of twists. Yes. Um, I think maybe a bit more than usual. Um, so. No, we didn't. I, I mean, the source material uh, was Lissa's book, and therefore I think the, the structure of the film was already there for us. Um, I, I mean, it, it felt so, I mean, Gabby Chiappi adapted the, the, the novel to, to, to film and her script was so rhythmic and so kind of musical in a sense that it felt there wasn't much <laughs> that we could have added to make it any better. Um, I remember the first time I sort of sat and read it and I spoke to my agent was like, do you know what, I, I, I really want to do this. It feels very musical and very physical, it, you know, in, in the writing, it was always on the move. Everyone was sort of always walking. Mm -hmm. There was, a, like, as I say, there was a rhythm to it, and I think that that's sort of very rare. Um, and I, I don't think I could have <laughs> put, added anything <laughs> to, to that that would have been of worth anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that I was thinking about that earlier. That the four of you are all so musical, uh, not just smart at analysing, but you are musical and you are all good dancers and you all have funny <laughs> bone. And I think making the, this very intricate, complex script light and effortless is, is, um, is key to make it land on both legs. And I think the actors have a lot, uh, or that they can do this, no one else can, make it organic, light, uh, throw away, where it actually is not or not all of it is, it, because there's so many stories you want to tell with this film, and there's so much material, and there's so much love um, 
for filmmaking and and all these details, but still to make it feel uh, natural is very much uh, because of the actors. I think we just have time for one more question. If we can, yeah. Hello, I'm Karin Svensson, Swedish Radio, and uh, we've been touching upon this before, but it, it, but there is this point that the film makes that's really poignant and modern about the importance of female screenwriters and in making better roles for women and also empowering the female audience. And I'm wondering how eager you were to make that point, how important it was to you. And I'm wondering, uh, I want to ask Gemma about how, how you felt about that part of the story. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm come from such a privileged background that I feel that when you talk about feminist issues, it, it makes much more sense for me to, to talk about the third world uh, or women who are much more needy than I am. I get so many good jobs. I get to work with so many fantastic people and every work day of my life I work with men who are not oppressive at all. Um, so I'm, I'm just not good at answering these questions. <laughs> I mean, look at us. There's no reason to complain. <laughs> 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 uh, not that I, I, I teach um, writers and directors and I can behind closed doors in small groups or individually tell them what they should do to address the problem you're talking about. But I think it would be ungrateful in a, a, I mean, we've just made this film about a young girl who has so many skills and Rachel's part who is a walking proof that women can be really strong and strategic and, and men in this film who, who change, uh, who both love women. Um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe Amanda is better at answering <laughs> you. <laughs> well, all I was going to say was that pressure in, in the film, in the storytelling, about trying to keep to the truth of the story and find a way to tell that truth in an accessible, uh, enjoyable, delightful way that also satisfies the Ministry of Information in this particular guise or the American distributors in this film as well. Th those are the things that I think people respond to. It, it happens in this story that she... Her truth is that it's the two sisters, and the two sisters are the heroes of the piece. Um, and that has a lovely, in a sense, feminist sort of um, influence on the film. But in fact, it's about finding the truth in your story and holding true to the centre of your story and taking that through to the end of the film. It, it, I think, weirdly, we make a film within a film, and the film within the film is a flag-waving one with a message. But the, the, the larger enterprise isn't that. You know, it's a thing of joy, absolute joy, and, it's, and of celebration, and a celebration of women rather than a proclamation about them, you know. Um, I think it's a very, uh, it's a sort of message one can impose upon the film, but one that we're not standing up and screaming about. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being so lovely and giving us your insights. I'm afraid we have to let the delightful team there finest off to the next, but thank you for being with us. And if you'd just sit in your seats for one moment so we can help them slip out. Thank you all very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey.